For the second year in a row, I travelled to Edinburgh on Wednesday to see the Fringe Festival. I had intended to do a vlog of my visit, uh, but I didn't end up filming very much. So this will be more of a review than anything else. Uh, so my train got into the station uh, shortly after 12. I bought a sandwich and ate it in the waiting room, which has pigeons wandering around freely and picking up crumbs. Uh, here's one I filmed. Then I had two hours until my first show. Last year I booked three shows, but I missed out on one as I couldn't find the venue. So this time I thought I'd make sure I knew where everything was before anything else. I had planned to maybe film something touristy like Princess Street Gardens or the castle, but it took most of the two hours to find all the venues and by then I was exhausted. First up I saw Nish Kumar at the Monkey Barrel. Uh, the maps say this is just off Southbridge, uh, but it turns out you have to go through Hunter Square first. Nish has been on everything from Mock the Week to Taskmaster to The Mash Report. He's one of the biggest comedians in the country and his show was sold out weeks ago, so I was very lucky to get a ticket. Uh, thankfully, I was four or five rows back, so I didn't get picked on. Uh, he mainly interacted with the kids in the audience. Not in a creepy way, there were some boys there between 11 and 16. But that didn't stop him from using all of the swear words repeatedly to hilarious effect. Uh, his material is extremely political. Uh, from an angry left-wing viewpoint, uh, which might not be for everyone, but it's fine by me. Obviously, he covered the current wave of far-right anti-immigration riots, as well as the new Labour government and the last Tory government, and some really funny material about Trump's near assassination that would probably never be allowed on television. Um, he also did a bit about the time Gary Lineker was dropped from Match of the Day, uh, which I barely remember. Uh, turns out it was in March 2023, uh, which is hardly topical anymore, but it's still funny stuff, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, there were also some really funny anecdotes uh, making fun of right-wing comedians like Jimmy Carr and Ricky Gervais. All in all, great show. Although it was technically a work in progress, uh, he wasn't reading from notebooks or anything like that. Uh, it's all very polished. Uh, his Edinburgh run is sold out, uh, but after that he is going on tour, uh, so see him if you can. After that it was over to the Underbelly in Bristol Square. I'd already been there last year, so I knew where to go. Uh, straight down South Bridge, and then when you hit the University District, you, know, you turn right and then just carry straight on for a bit, and, and yeah, you'll find it. It's a whole area, you can't miss it. As with last year, I was there to see Suze Kempner, uh, who's one of the funniest people on the website formerly known as Twitter. Her last show was Y2K Woman, all about nostalgia for the early 2000s, and this year it's Class of 2000, uh, which covers similar themes, uh, but with more focus on class, uh, what it's like growing up in the world of dressage, when you're not that rich. Uh, I'm not a fan of dressage myself, as whipping horses to make them do fancy dances seems a bit cruel in my opinion, but it's always funny seeing somebody get hyper specific about a niche topic. Uh, and she does throw in more relatable content, uh, such as spot on impressions of Alanis Morissette, Kate Winslet and Dot Cotton. Uh, some of the material was recycled from last year, uh, but I guess all the big comedians do that, uh, which will explain this is a bit about Gary Lineker. And there was definitely enough new stuff there to make it worthwhile. Plus there's no audience participation, it's just a safe space where you can relax and enjoy yourself. Uh, so it's definitely my kind of thing. Uh, Susie's at Edinburgh for the rest of the month, and after that she's going on tour. Uh, so definitely go see her if you get the chance. Uh, by then I was starving, uh, so I got a chicken burger from a small cafe, uh, which was delicious. And then on to the underbelly in Cowgate. Uh, it turns out this is on a completely different level to the main town. Uh, you either have to go down a massive set of steps, or find the intersection where one road goes down and another goes up and choose the downward path, as if you were in a fantasy novel. I was originally planning on just seeing the two acts, uh, then get something to eat and maybe wander around filming things until I caught my train. But at the last minute I read some reviews and thought, yeah, I could squeeze in one more show before the train goes. Uh, I was wrong, more on that later. Uh, Rosalind Knit's Clementine is very different to the other two shows I saw that day. It's basically a one-woman show. Uh, so I guess I'm a theatre critic now. How did that happen? I don't know. Uh, this is not my usual kind of thing. I was very much stepping outside my comfort zone. Uh, but I'm very glad I did, as it was probably my favourite show of the day. Uh, the premise is a kind of riff on period dramas, like Jane Austen or Bridgerton. Uh, but there's absolutely no adherence to period detail. It's just full of anachronistic references throughout. You're just thrown into this surreal alternate world, uh, which is a lot of fun. Rosalie Minnett plays Clementine. A uh, young woman desperate to get married before her 27th birthday, 
and she gives an amazing performance. Uh, she's an absolute force of nature, single-handedly taking control of the entire room and taking them on this wild ride with her. She has incredible comic timing, and there's a couple of songs in there as well, uh, so she can definitely sing. So she's extremely multi-talented. I can definitely see her becoming a massive star in the future, and when she does, I'll be able to say that I saw her in a small room at the top of an ancient pub in the oldest part of Edinburgh. Uh, the whole experience is brought to life with videos, music, props, it's a whole big production for such a small space, and there's even a fair bit of audience participation along the way. I was kind of dreading this, as I ended up in the front row, not by choice, uh, but thankfully I was not dragged up on stage, uh, only two people had to do that. Uh, but looking back, it might actually have been more fun to be part of it, so maybe I missed out. And I never thought I'd be saying that, so I guess I learned something new about myself. Uh, Clementine is on until uh, the 11th of August. Uh, I guess it was just a short run, uh, but if it ever gets arrived anywhere, I would definitely recommend going to see it. Uh, I guess it could be turned into a TV show or movie at some point, uh, but I'm not sure how well it would work in a non-live environment. Uh, but Rosalie Minnit is incredibly talented, uh, so I'll definitely be looking out for whatever it is she does next. Uh, so after the show, I had thought that I could make it to the station in time for my train. I was wrong. Uh, I'm sure there must be a quick way to get from Cowgate to Waverley, uh, but I did not find it in time. Uh, luckily, I caught the next train instead, and I made it to Newcastle just in time to get the last train home to my hometown. Um, otherwise, I would have had to spend the night in Newcastle, which is a scary thought. All in all, I'd say it's a definite improvement on last year. Uh, I got to see all three shows I'd booked. One big name, one old favourite, and one I'd never heard of before, uh, which I think is definitely the way to do it. I was exhausted by the end after all that walking. Uh, my feet were killing me yesterday, uh, but today they're not so bad. Uh, I was also dehydrated as my water bottle had leaked all over my bag. So I was left with only a few sips uh, to last the final five or six hours. Luckily, I didn't keep anything valuable in there in case it got stolen. Uh, I only had a pair of shorts in case the weather got better and a magazine, which is now unreadable. Finally, let's take a look at all these flyers I picked up along the way. Uh, firstly, there's Furioso. F Furioso. Uh, nothing to do with the latest Mad Max film, which I still haven't seen. Uh, apparently it's about an aggressive hooligan. Oh no, I missed the show where you spent an hour in the company of an aggressive hooligan. What a shame. Uh, next we have Eric Rushton, real one. Uh, never heard of him. Uh, Mutant Olive 2.0, performed by Mitch Hara. That's in there. The Beatbox Collective, What's Your Sound? Uh, featuring the World Beatbox Champions. Sounds great. Uh, Isabel Rogers, How to Be Content. Uh, a young woman singing quirky songs, probably. Uh, finally, we have Big Head at the Edinburgh Fringe. Uh, the company that brought you Rosalie Minnit. Also has BB Cave in the screen test. Sarah Roberts in Silkworm. And Pauline in Le Noir in Puella Eternal. So if you have anything like as good as Clementine. Uh, then they might be worth seeing as well. Uh, so that's it for this year. I will definitely be going back next year. Uh, there's still a lot of comedians I've never seen live. Uh, so maybe I'll tick more of those off my list. Or perhaps see someone new. And maybe I'll actually do some vlogging next time as well. Uh, so press subscribe if you want. Although I won't be doing another video like this until next August. Uh, this channel is mainly about Doctor Who and movie reviews most of the time. This was very much a one-off, uh, but thank you for sticking with this all the same. Uh, see you next time.